someone else was passing through the cemetery. And because it was dark, they also fell into that grave. And they also tried to climb out, and they were not having any luck. And then they heard a voice behind them that said, You're not going to get out of here. But they did. <laughs> That is enthusiasm. That is passion. Pete Gray deserves to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. Pete Gray has a, a dream throughout life to play in the Major League Baseball. And that passion warms his heart day after day and month after month and he did what he could and then finally in 1945 he played for the St. Louis Browns. His big dream was to play in Yankee Stadium. Pete Gray never got a hit. Never hit a home run. All he played one year but he deserves to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame because Pete Gray is missing his right arm. The one thing that he did not have was a lack of passion. And that, brethren and friends, is what I want to encourage us today, is having a passion for God. I thought walking hard was should be my last lesson that I deliver in Paris. And of course, there's lots of subjects that I can talk on that are, that are very important. But I decided my last lesson will be on passion for God. As David says in Psalm 9 and verse 1, Brother George read to us twice, in fact, David says, I will give thanks to the Lord with all of my heart. The English David person says, my whole heart. And I will tell of all of your wonders. David had a passion for God. First of all, we need to have passion that is directed towards God. Turn in your Bibles to Numbers chapter 25. And if you're using the Bible in the pew, it's page 133. Numbers chapter 25. The Israelites are in the wilderness. They have been there for almost 40 years. This is at the end of their wilderness wanderings. They are about to cross over into the promised land. Chapters 22, 23, and 24 are the occasion where King Balak of Moab tries to get Balaam, the prophet, to curse the Israelites. He was scared of the Israelites, and he believed that Balaam could curse the Israelites so that he could conquer them. We had a lesson on this, in fact, about four years ago. Maybe you remember the highlights. But God spoke to Balaam the prophet, and God says, You only tell, you only prophesy what I tell you to prophesy. And in which case, Balaam was only able to bless the Israelites. He was never able to curse the Israelites. They were God's people. Make Balak so mad. Now we come to chapter 25, beginning in verse 1. Israel remained at Shittim, and the people began to play a harlot with the daughters of Moab. What Balak tried to do openly and publicly, get Balaam to curse the people, he was able to accomplish behind the scenes. He got the women of Moab to go enjoy an intimate relationship with the Israelite men and thereby got them to worship idols and brought God's curse down on them. Sometimes Satan will work on our Achilles' heel. Verse 2, they invited the people to the sacrifice of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. And so Israel joined themselves to Baal of Peor, and the Lord was angry against Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of the people and execute them in broad daylight before the Lord, so that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. And so Moses said to the judges of Israel, If each of you slay his men, each of you rather, slay 
persuade his men to have joined themselves to Baal of Peor. Now, what of the Israelites? And I don't understand why some people do the things that they do. In open defiance of the God of heaven, beginning in verse 6, one of the sons of Israel came and brought to his relatives a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and the sight of all the congregation, the sons of Israel, while they were weeping at the doorway of the tent of men. In open defiance of God. In open defiance of His command, He's just given to kill all of those who are doing this very thing. This man presumes upon the grace of God. Now verse 7. And here's the point of this passage. When Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he arose from the midst of the congregation and took a spear in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and pierced both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through the body. So the plague on the sons of Israel was checked. Those who died by the plague were 24,000. The entire population of Bourbon County. <laughs> But this Phineas, son of Aaron, killed with a spear this man and this woman with whom he was fornicating. The Lord spoke to Moses, verse 10, verse 11, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned away my wrath from the sons of Israel, in that he was jealous with my jealousy among them, so that I did not destroy the sons of Israel in my jealousy. God praises Phineas for his zeal. The English Standard Version here, the New American Standard, translates it as jealousy. But it was Phineas's passion for the nature of God. He knew that this man was offending God by violating his commandments. God had been killing Israelites during that time period, and so Phineas saw it as a, you know, a way to execute the wrath of God on that very cup. And God, in fact, praises him for that. Our passion needs to be directed towards God. In Romans chapter 12, and verse 11, Paul encourages Christians there that we should not be lagging behind in diligence. Fervent in spirit serving the Lord. We need to be compassionate, or passionate rather, about God and about His work. About the church. Worship in the church. And the work of the church. Passion is what allows us to take whatever abilities we have and use them in service to God. Passion is what motivates us to put our heart into what God wants us to do. Zeal is what causes us to wake up early and say, in what way can I serve God this morning? Zeal is what motivates us to lay our head down at night and say, what can I do for God tomorrow? Zeal motivates us to put our heart into the work of the church. To put our heart into worship of God. To use our abilities the best we can. Not first and foremost to serve self, but first and foremost to serve God. Don't lag behind in your diligence to serve the Lord. Let me step on a few toes. <laughs>